to run a marathon, you'll never get to the place where you're ready to run it unless you put your body under stress. Now, if you're a wise trainer, you'll know how to do it carefully. You'll know how to do it so not to injure yourself. You'll measure the stress carefully, and you'll increase it incrementally. But you'll stress your body, or you'll never condition yourself to run a marathon. Runners have to run. Sailors have to go to sea. Soldiers have to go to battle. And for the Christian, tribulation is just part of the Christian life. We shouldn't desire, nor should we hope, for a tribulation-free Christian life. And let me give you three reasons why. Why we should not desire or hope for a tribulation-free Christian life. Number one, because God uses tribulation wonderfully in our life. He really does. He uses it to produce things in our life that would otherwise not be there. Secondly, God knows how much tribulation we can take, and he carefully measures the tribulation that we face. God doesn't leave these things up to chance. He just doesn't allow the dump truck of tribulation to, to fall down upon you without measure, without carefully knowing what you can and can't handle. I believe that there's probably been a time or two in my life where God has measured the tribulation in my life, and I have piled more upon it all on my own. You know what I'm talking about right there. And, and sometimes I don't want to blame God for that because you put that on yourself all by yourself. You see, God carefully measures how much tribulation we can take. And he only, only gives us what can be redeemed for his glory.
say, well, no way, I'm not. You see, they start out wishing for better hope and, and more character. But you see, you have to work yourself back to the line. You have to begin with tribulation. That's not my preference. My preference, personally, is I want God tonight, when I go to bed, to sprinkle upon me perseverance, character, and hope, like as if it was pixie dust. And he sprinkles it upon me as I sleep. And when I wake up, all of a sudden, I have more hope, more character, and more perseverance. You know what? I'll pray really hard tonight that God does that as I sleep. But he won't do it. Because it's not his will. It's not his plan. He says, this is how I develop these things in you. I develop them through tribulation. Therefore, we say, we say it soberly. We say it reverently. We say about tribulation, Lord, bring it on. I know that you love me. I know that you carefully measure every trial and that you have a loving purpose in it all to accomplish in my life in tribulation. Lord, I'm not going to seek out trials. I'm not going to search out tribulation, but I won't despise them and I won't allow it to lose hope when they come into my life. I trust your love in everything that you allow in my life. Yeah. That's the attitude that you and I and each one of us should have. And he develops the same thought and tells us evidence for our hope here in verse 5. It's as if we're, we're climbing up step to more and to a greater glory. Verse 5, he says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to 